In this video, we begin our journey into acid-base chemistry, and particularly how it's applied to equilibria. And so we'll start out with an introduction to acids and bases. And so there's our learning outcomes expectations. Feel free to pause if you want to read through those. If not, yeah, let's let's begin our journey into Bronsted, Lowry, acids, and bases. And so you covered this a little bit in General Chemistry 1 in Chapter 4. There's a section talking about acid-base chemistry. And so for the most part, this section should be review. And so the bronsted lowry definition of acids and bases, and this is in contrast to say a Lewis or Arrhenius acid definition, Bronsted acids and bases have a very particular definition, which is they are able to donate protons, and that's in the form of H+. And so sometimes it's referred to as protons, sometimes hydrogen ions, sometimes it's just written as H+. Uh, but the point is you have some species, it gives up an H+, that is an acid. In aqueous solution, it doesn't just exist as H plus floating around in solution. It turns out when you're in water, H2O is what's going to basically sop up that H plus and you're going to generate H3O plus. And so um, these are equivalent notations for the most part. This can happen in any solvent. Uh, this is common in water solutions. And so the contrast is a Bronsted base. This is a species that's able to accept a proton or accept a hydrogen ion or accept an H plus. You have B minus uh, plus H plus giving you this HB species. And in aqueous conditions, we have water around, so it doesn't just, you know, uh, take H pluses. It takes it away from H2O or from H3O plus, depending on what the pH of the solution is. But the point is, acids give up a proton. HA gives up an H plus to generate either H plus or H3O plus. And a base uh, accepts a, a proton to generate HB and then um, OH minus if it's an aqueous solution. And so we have acid-base reactions where we can take an acid, we can combine it with a base, and we can have an acid-base reaction. And so in this case, HCl is the acid, H2O is the base. And so you can see HCl gives up a proton to become Cl minus, H2O accepts a proton to become H3O plus. By the definition, that's your acid, that's your base. What's interesting is these reactions can also go the opposite way. And so you, you, if you have the Cl minus, we already know that it's a species that could accept a proton. It's not really good at it, but it could. We also know H3O plus can donate a proton because it just accepted a proton. So essentially the reverse process can occur, right? H3O plus is an acid. It can donate a proton to generate H2O. And then Cl minus can accept the proton and turn into HCl. And so, HCl is an acid, but after losing a proton, it generates Cl minus. Cl minus can behave as a base. In this case, it's a very, 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 very weak base, but it still can be a base. And so what we're talking about with these pairings of species, we're talking about conjugate acid-base pairs, right? And so we have HCl is the acid, H2O is the base, Cl minus is a base, H3O is an acid. And so a conjugate acid-base pair are basically a, a pair of species that are only differentiated by gaining or losing an H plus. And so in this case, HCl loses an H plus to give you Cl minus. Cl minus gains an H plus to give you HCl. And so each of those is a conjugate acid base pair. Likewise, H2O plus H3O plus are a conjugate acid base pair, right? The only difference between these two is gaining and losing an H plus. And so in this reaction, we have an acid base, a conjugate acid, and a conjugate base. And it just has to do with whether it gave up or accepted electrons. So here's your acid, conjugate base. Here's your base, conjugate acid. And so we can look at any acid-base reaction and we can make these assignments. In this particular case, HF gives up a proton to give F minus. That's your acid, the species that gives up H plus. When that H plus is removed, it gives you F minus as the conjugate base. Likewise, H2O, that's a base. It accepts a proton to give H3O plus. That's the acid. This acid can give up a proton to generate H2O. That's the uh, conjugate base. And so it's, it's just pairing up those species. The only difference is a proton is being exchanged. So HF and F minus, that's a conjugate acid base pair. H2O, H3O plus, that's a conjugate base, conjugate acid pair. And it's just the transferring a proton between the two species. And so we can do this again, NH3, H2O giving NH4 plus OH minus, you're doing H plus bookkeeping. Where does the H plus go? And so you have NH3, it goes to NH4 plus, that means this is gaining an H plus or gaining a proton. That means this is a base, that's the conjugate acid. 
And similarly, H2O is turning into OH minus. This is losing an H plus to turn into OH minus, which means this is the acid and that's the conjugate base. And so again, the nomenclature, you're associating uh, two species on both sides of the equation. The only difference between them is one has the pro H plus and one doesn't have it. And that's the conjugate acid base pair. And in this case, when you're exchanging a proton between two species, there has to be two conjugate pairs, NH3, NH4, and H2O, OH minus. And so yeah, we showed these two different reactions. What's interesting about this is we have NH3 as a base, H2O as an acid, and then the conjugate acid, conjugate base. We have HCl as an acid, H2O acting as a base, giving Cl minus and H3O plus. What's interesting about this is what we learned from this is H2O can act as both an acid and a base, right? In one of these, it gives up a uh, proton to NH4 to generate NH4+. In this one, it gains a proton to generate H3O and steals the proton from HCl to generate Cl-. And so water is a, a unique molecule. There's others like it, but water is particularly and special in that it can g gain or lose electrons or lose protons at will. And so these types of species, we, we call them amphiprotic or amphioteric species. Uh, basically, they can gain or lose protons depending on the condition they're in. If they're in an acidic condition, they'll gain protons. If they're in a basic condition, they'll typically lose protons. And so, uh, yeah, amphiprotic species. And so what's important about this is there's, there's a bunch of different versions of this, but in this reaction right here, we're showing an example of two of these amphiprotic species. And so HCO3 minus plus H2O, both these equations are the same we can actually draw two different products. We can draw CO3 2 minus, where this acts as the acid, this acts as the base, giving you the conjugate base and the conjugate acid. Alternatively, this can act as the base, this can act as the acid to generate H2CO3, that's the conjugate acid of this base species, and then OH minus, that is the conjugate base of the acid H2O. And so again, water can act as both an acid and a base, both of these guys can um, are, are amphioprotic species. And so again, they can act as an acid or base depending on the condition. Now in this particular case, one of these two will be more favorable uh, depending on the pH of the aqueous solution, um, but, but all these equilibria are happening at the same time. And so like we said, water is special in that can you give up or gain a proton. What's interesting is it doesn't have to do that with any other species. It turns out water can do, or H2O can do that with itself, right? And so H2O can act as a base. It can also act as an acid. And so if it's acting as a base, it takes a proton. If it's acting as an acid, it gives up a proton. And so these arrows here, this is something you'll learn about a lot more in organic chemistry. It's called arrow pushing, but basically you're bookkeeping where the electrons go. And in this case, these lone pair of electrons steal the H. These electrons go here, giving an OH minus, which is over here, and generating an H3O plus. And so again, in this equation, water is acting as both an acid and a base. Acid, it's giving up a proton. You're giving OH as the conjugate base. You have a base, it's gaining a proton. You get H3O plus as the conjugate acid. And so we can draw this formula out. It's basically two H2Os giving you H3O plus and OH minus. Or you can do simplified notation if you, if, uh, if you like, H2O giving H plus and OH minus. This is what really happens in aqueous conditions. This is what, what bookkeeping wise, some people keep track of it as. So both of these equations are equivalent. But what this process is known as is the auto ionization of water. And what's interesting about it is this happens in water all the time. H2O doesn't exist as just H2O. There's always some H3O plus and always some OH minus. And so it's called auto ionization or self ionization. It basically says you have a pure substance, but, and it's neutral. H2O is neutral. Neutral. It's it's a, a octet. It's a Lewis dot filled structure, but sometimes it turns into H plus and OH minus, or H3O plus and OH minus. And so, it's a dissociation process. H2O turns into these guys. These can actually interact and go back the other way. This is an equilibrium condition, and because it's an equilibrium condition, we can assign an equilibrium constant to it. And so, we can do products over reactants. Products is H3O plus um, times OH minus. Reactants in this case is liquid. Remember if it's a liquid or a solid, it doesn't show up in the equilibrium equation. And so there it is. There's K is equal to H3O plus times OH minus. 
That is the auto ionization constant. We also refer to this as KW. And so KW is a very specific um, equilibrium constant. And so in the previous chapter, we talked about capital K describing an equilibrium constant, products of the stoichiometry over reactants of the stoichiometry. That is always true. But sometimes we add a subscript here to describe something very particular. And in this case, it is the equilibrium uh, ion product constant of water, or the auto ionization constant of water, which is why we put a W there. And so this number turns out to be really useful in acid-based chemistry. And so remember K, capital K, which is equilibrium constant is temperature dependence. But at 25 degrees, KW is one times 10 to the minus 14. And so this is a really, really useful equation because it effectively tells us, okay, water auto ionizes in solution. And that ratio between H3O plus and OH minus is gonna change depending on the acidity of the solution. But no matter what, H3O plus times OH minus is gonna be equal to one times 10 to the minus minus 14 at 25 degrees. And so this gives us a reference point and it effectively gives us a ratio between these two. And so, yeah, there it is, the ion product constant of water. And so KW, it's, it's constant at any given temperature and at 25 degrees, which is what we usually um, deal with at room temperature, it's one times 10 to the minus 14. And so what this effectively tells us is that the, the, the ratio, uh, basically these numbers are directly related to each other, right? If H3O plus goes up, OH minus has to go down. And the reason is this times this always has to be this number, or it always has to be a constant, right? And so if I add more acid or HCl to the solution, this goes up, this goes down, but the multiplication of them always has to equal this number. And so if you add base to water, you're getting rid of some of that H3O plus and you're generating more OH minus but no matter what h3o plus times oh minus has to equal this constant and so yeah it gives us it gives us a reference point essentially and so in pure water effectively this ion auto ionization it has to equal uh, each other right and so any h2o reacting with h2o is going to generate an h3o plus and an oh minus the concentration of these guys is going to be equal and so um, with those concentrations equal you're effectively a neutral solution and so that's what we're describing here. And so you can actually go through and do the math. You can effectively say, okay, KW is equal to H3O plus uh, times OH minus. If KW is equal to one times 10 to the minus 14, you could go through the, and do the math. You could say, okay, if these two are equal, we'll substitute X, the square root of that number gives you the concentration of each of those. And so at a neutral solution, those concentrations have to be equal. Those concentrations times each other is equal to one times 10 to the minus 14. Now an acidic solution, we're generating more H H3O plus than OH minus, which means the concentration of uh, H3O plus has to be greater than that number. It's basically you're converting OH minus into H3O plus. This number is gonna be larger than 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven. This one will be less than 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven. Uh, conversely, in a basic solution, you're converting this uh, H3O plus into OH minus. You're gonna generate more than one times 10 to the minus seven. You're gonna generate less H3O than one times 10 to the minus seven. But multiplying those numbers together, they always have to equal this, at least at 25 degrees, it has to equal 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. And so again, you have to equal that number. Um, your conditions are neutral where they're equal. You can be acidic where there's more H3O plus and OH minus. It can be basic where there's less H3O plus than OH minus. Uh, the point is that whatever you add to the solution, it's going to change this ratio. And that ratio is fixed based on this, or the, the amount you can of H3O versus OH minus is always going to be equal to one times 10 to the minus 14. And so again, that's how we define essentially acidity, uh, basicity, especially in aqueous solution. If those concentrations are equal, it's neutral. If H3O plus is greater than OH minus, it's acidic. If H3O plus is less than OH minus, it is basic. All right, so that's our introduction to acid-based chemistry. We have acid uh, Bronsted acids and bases. We talk about donating and accepting protons. We have conjugate acid-based pairs where the pair is essentially the only difference between them is gaining or losing a proton. So the core is the same. It's just, does it have an extra proton or does it lose that proton? We talk about these uh, amphiprotic species that can gain or lose protons under a given set of conditions. They're basically acting as an acid or a base. Uh, it can do both. H2O is a special example of that where it auto ionizes into H3O plus and OH minus where it's that's the conjugate acid that's the conjugate base of H2O.
Um, we have an equilibrium constant to describe that auto, auto ionization, which is this KW. W subscript is the water ionization uh, constant. And so KW is equal to H3O plus times OH minus, which means that the, the amount of these two has to, when you multiply these together, has to equal KW. And KW at room temperature is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And this will become really important when we start talking about pH and uh, the pH scale. And so yeah, we've defined what Bronsted-Lowry acid bases are. We've talked about the KW constant, and that allows us to move forward in talking about pH and pOH, which we will do in the next video.